So again, welcome, Alan McDaniels. For those of you who uh, know me at all in the times that I've been here before, you know, one of the reasons that Robert likes me to come is because I'm like Robert. And I think the word is uh, unpredictable. And the reason I'm unpredictable is because I never know what's going to happen. And this morning, I have something to share with you. I came to preach a sermon. You guys want to hear a sermon? Okay. Uh, it may sound, this is my little disclaimer in the front. It may not sound like a sermon. It may sound like a high school science class. And the danger to that, of course, is that I've never met anybody that liked high school science. <laughs> so I was having this conversation with the Lord. That's called, for, for you religious people, that's called prayer. So I was having this conversation with the Lord. And the Lord started showing me what I really believe he wanted me to speak about this morning. And I said to the Lord, that doesn't sound like a sermon. It sounds like high school science. And he said, right. I said, right? No, that's right. It's done right. See, the reason that people don't like high school science is because it's always done wrong. It can be done by the best teachers in the world. It can be done by NASA. It can be done all these things. But it's always done wrong. Because what I want to share with you is about God's work in creation, particularly in the heavens. And the first thing they teach you in high school when you go through a physics or a science class is they'll start talking about our solar system. Anybody ever hear this? Anybody ever, I mean, go through this? Anybody ever think about our solar system? Okay, well, you're wrong. And herein lies the problem. Because the word of God says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. It all belongs to him, and not just this planet, but it all belongs. It's not our solar system. It's his solar system. And herein lies the rub. Because you see, any study of science should begin with this simple fact. And it is a simple fact. In the beginning, God created. It didn't happen by accident. It's not just a big bang. It was God speaking something into existence. So when I was having this conversation with the Lord and talking about this, one of the things that came to my mind was the very, very first conversation that I ever had where I was conscious of the presence of the Lord, the day that I got saved. And I've shared my testimony here before, so I'm not going to go through that whole thing. But I do want to tell you this. Having never, on my 33rd birthday, which is over 33 years ago, I sat down at my kitchen table, and I opened the Bible for the first time in my life, saying, Lord, if you're real, I want to know it. And I flipped open a Bible, Alice's Bible, I certainly didn't have a Bible, and I opened up to Psalm 8. And Psalm 8 says, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars that thou hast ordained. And as I was thinking about this, how many times have you ever considered the moon and the stars that he has ordained? I'm not just talking about, okay, there's a moon out tonight and you see it. How many times have you ever considered it, thought about it, meditated on it? Because you see, it says Paul wrote in Romans and says that God reveals himself, reveals his divine nature. He reveals himself through what he has created. That's why we're supposed to consider the things that he's done, like the moon and the stars that he has ordained. Well, I said, Lord, it still sounds like high school science. You see, the problem is they always do it wrong. It's thy heavens. When I consider thy heavens, it's not our heavens. And as I went on, I was thinking about, there's got to be some revelation, something that the Lord is trying to get through to me here. Because I wouldn't qualify as a high school science teacher. 
And if I did, I wouldn't want to do it anyhow. But here was what God was saying to me, and I, and I shared, I don't know if you put up, oh, the light of the world. I want to read you a scripture from Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through verse 3. This is the prophet Isaiah, 7,500 years, 2,750 years ago. Have you, anybody ever read this verse, these verses before? Isaiah 60? When you, when you read them, did they sound like this? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Behold, is that the way it sounds when you read it? I certainly don't think, you see, this is a spoken word from Isaiah, and I don't think that's the way it sounded when Isaiah spoke it. I think when Isaiah spoke it, it sounded more like, Arise! Shine forth! For your light has come. The glory of Yahweh has risen on you. Amen. This is a proclamation that rings of God's creation. And His glory has shone upon us. How many of you know the story of creation? A few. Okay, I gave you the first part already. I gave you a hint. In the beginning, God created. <laughs> okay? What was the first thing he created? Light. He said, let there be light. He spoke this light into existence. And if you read on in the first chapter, it says that he created two lights, a greater light and a lesser light, the sun and the moon. Here in Isaiah 60, it says... For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. How many of you have noticed in this day and age, in the time that you live in, in the time that I live in, in the world that we live in, there is darkness, there is deep darkness. It is incredible what darkness we live in. What a sin-filled world we live in. What a violent world we live in. You know, there are wars raging around the world, not even just the ones that America and, and other Western powers are involved in, in Afghanistan and Iraq. There are wars going all over on the African continent, in South America. There are wars, there's violence being done all over. There is an economic crisis that darkens the life of millions upon millions of people around the world. There is such darkness. There's a job crisis, it's dark. There's a mortgage crisis, it's darkness. There is such darkness in the world. But Isaiah proclaimed, arise, shine forth, for your light has come. Who is this light? Who is the light of the world? Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. But then he went on to say, I am the light of the world while I'm in the world. He left, guys. He left. So now I'm going to teach my science class. I want to talk to you about the moon. Everybody ever look at the moon? Everybody's looked at the moon. Everybody's looked at the moon. One of the things I want to tell you about the moon. Have you ever seen a bright full moon where you literally cast shadows? There was such brightness coming from the moon. You ever? This, by the way, come on, guys. If I ask you a question, how about you up there? Good, okay. The moon only shines like that when the sun is not visible. If there's darkness, it's because the sun is gone. But God made provision. And the provision he made, his plan, because he said he would bring light out of darkness, his provision was to put the moon there. And the moon can light up the world. Guess what, guys? We're the moon. We're not the sun, but we're the moon. We bring what light there is in the darkness because we are living in that time of night right now when it's nighttime the sun is hidden if I make a anybody by the way I should have asked this before I got myself in trouble are there any high school teachers in here are there anybody in here who teaches high school science Whew, okay How does the moon, the moon doesn't have a light. There's no generator on the moon that brightens it, right? You got this. This is, this is high school science. 
It's a reflection. We are supposed to reflect the light of Jesus Christ. Now, it says in Proverbs not to lean on your own understanding. If in the course of time, God in his wisdom, when he was doing creation, had said, I'll wait till NASA shows up and have them put this reflector up in the sky, they would have made something so bright and shiny, they would have made mirrors and they would have polished them till they were absolute perfection to shine that light. Isn't that, don't you think? So why did God pick this rock, this lump of rock out in the sky that has the same reflective capabilities as a lump of coal? Do you realize how dark and lightless and imperfect the moon is? And yet, that's what God chose to reflect his light into the darkness of the world. Amen. He didn't pick, if I was doing it, I would pick something nice and bright and shiny. If I, was, if I figured the sermon stuff out, I would have picked somebody to do it besides me, somebody who was bright and shiny. I would have got a high school teacher up here who knew about science. But God didn't do that. He picked me. And he picked you and you and you and you to reflect his light into this world. It's incredible that such an imperfect thing, but yet God said, see, his, his, his creation reflects what and who he is and his plan in the world. He said he chose the foolish to shame the wisdom of the wise. He chose the weak that his power might be perfected. He didn't put this great big highly polished mirror in the sky to reflect his light. He put this ball of rock with no light whatsoever. You're qualified. You have everything that God needs to reflect his light. It doesn't matter how imperfect you are in the natural because it's his work to perfect you. And Paul said, I know that what he began in you, he is able to complete in you. This is really cool stuff when you stop and think about it. Because we're supposed to consider the work of his hands, the moon and the stars that he has ordained. We're not just supposed to glance at them once in a while. Think about the effect that the moon has on the world that we live in. It affects the tides and gravity and all kinds of things. We're supposed to have that kind of impact on the world. We're supposed to affect, not just shine light on, but affect everything in the world around us. God has a plan. And it's a cool plan. God has a... For, for, it says that God is a consuming fire. For a consuming fire, man, he is cool. Okay. How many of you know, I love full moons. Alice and I used to live, we've lived many times on the water. Whether in the Caribbean when we were missionaries in Central America. Before we came up to Central Florida, we lived in Miami. And we lived on a, in a high rise right on the bay. There used to be a song before I was a kid, I think, moon over Miami. See that great big, it's incredible when the moon is so bright and it just reflects off the water. It's really, really cool. But you don't see that full moon all the time, do you? Lots of times you go out there and sometimes it's just a sliver. Right? That's because the world hides part of that reflection. That's high school science. Do you know, this is just a fact, that the moon is not the same size as the sun. The moon doesn't have the same power as the sun. I said this is high school science. This is not a sermon, so you gotta, you know, put up with it, all right? The moon is not the same size as the sun. How many of you here knew that? Okay, that's, that's good, okay. But do you know that in perspective, in appearance, that it is exactly the same size seen from Earth? When you see the moon from Earth, it, it looks exactly the same size as the sun. Did you know that? It is 400 times smaller than the sun. It is 400 times closer than the sun. So it appears exactly the same size. That's why you can have such a thing as a solar eclipse, where the moon can actually hide the entire sun, because they appear to be the same size. Did you know that the, the moon has the ability to hide the sun? It's called a solar eclipse. 
Did you know that the church has the power to hide the sun? And when we are not walking in the power and the spirit of God, when we are not walking in obedience to his commandments, when we are not walking led by the spirit of God, we can as easily hide the sun as reflect the sun. High school science, that's all this is. But you think about that. The world has the power to block the reflection of the sun on the moon. Do you know, and this is a fact, Jack, that the more you allow the world to enter into your life, the more of a sliver God's light is going to be in your light life instead of that full blown moon the more the world you allow into your life the less of God's light will be reflected in your life simple high school science see this is what they ought to be teaching in Christian schools and I'm dying absolutely serious because God's science, everything he has created, has a purpose. And that purpose is to, is to reveal him. I'm telling you, I had this conversation with the Lord. I said, Lord, this isn't a sermon. Talking about the moon and the stars. He said, oh, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The moon is a sermon about Jesus Christ. The stars are a sermon about the almighty God. And until you take time to consider his heavens, until you take time to consider the work of his fingers, the moon and the stars that he has ordained, you're never going to hear that sermon. And you may hear little things like Isaiah saying, oh, arise, shine forth, but you won't hear that thunderous voice that rings out across the centuries, that rings out across the miles and shouts the glory of God, that proclaims the glory of God, until you start meditating, concentrating, thinking about the Lord and the things of the Lord. Arise, shine forth. You're imperfect. Each and every one of you out there is imperfect. But he's in the process of perfecting us. One day we're going to be bright and shining. It says when we see him as he is, we will be as he is. We will be that perfect reflection of Jesus Christ. But it needs to be the desire of our heart right now. And I'm going to tell you something. Here's another fact. High school science. Do you know that we never see anything but one side of the moon? Are you aware of that? We always only see one side of the moon. The same side. Well, that's, in a sense, that's good because we're supposed to be consistent. We're not supposed to be one way on Saturday, another way on Sunday. We should have that consistency in our life where we're the same all the time. But having said that, I want to tell you this. God can see the backside of the moon. God can see things in your life that no, nobody in the world can see but him. Man judges by outward appearance, but God searches the heart. The Lord sees you the way nobody in the world sees you. And you want to know something? That would be a scary thought. Save for one fact. We've been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. That would be a scary thought except for one thing. There's therefore now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. That would be a scary thought. Save for one wonderful fact. That he, the potter, has taken this lump of clay. And he is molding me. He is shaping me into what he wants me to be. It's not up to me. All I got to do is surrender. And say, yes, Lord, here I am. The moon doesn't work at bringing forth light. Do you realize that? Like I said, there's not a lot of people up there holding candles. They're not doing things to make electricity on the moon. All it does, it's all God's work. It is a reflection of him. It has nothing to do with the moon itself. It's just there. We just need to be there and be available to the Lord to let him shine his light off of us.
We need to do that. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Anybody ever here been in real darkness? I'm not talking about a dark night. And I'm not talking about generally, I mean, if the lights go off in your house, there's still some kind of ambient light. I mean, real, real darkness. When there's no light whatsoever, that's a scary thing. I think it's a scary thing for just about anybody. Thank God he didn't leave us out in the dark. Thank God that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank God he came and called you by name and called you out of that darkness and into his marvelous light. That's what Peter wrote. We've been called into his marvelous light. It's all about light. This world needs the light of the Lord. It needs the light of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have it on its own. They're doing all this kind of stuff out there. You probably pay a lot of money. The Florida Power Light or Progress Light or one of those guys, you want to know something? They can't fix your problems. They can't light up and give you joy. They can't light you up and give you love. They can't do those things. I don't care how much you pay every month. But Jesus Christ, when he shines his light on you, he will bring those things into your life. But it's up to us just to be there and be available and not mess with light. Now, how do you mess with light? High school science. How many of you know what a prism is? You know what a prism is? Okay. You shine a light into a prism, and it splits that light into different colors. Right? It divides the light. The word prism actually comes from the Greek word to saw, to cut, to divide. That's where the word comes from. But when you put light through a prism, there is no piece of that light that is as bright as the light that went in. It's all darker, and it's all distorted. Because now you don't see that light as it is. You only see a piece of it. You may see red, you may see blue, you may see green, but you don't see that whole light when it goes through a prism. The church is not supposed to be a prism. We need to be careful that we don't divide the light. Jesus Christ said as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night he was taken, and he prayed that we would be one. And one of the reasons he prayed that we would be united, that we would be one, was so that the world would know that the Father had sent him. When we divide into thousands of denominations, into zillions of churches, and I'm not just talking about that, I'm talking about when people in a body, when we don't have that relationship, relationship, not acquaintance, a relationship with one another. People are not seeing Jesus Christ. They're not seeing the light of the world. They're seeing something distorted and they're seeing something dimmer. We need to repent of our division. I've said that here before and I am going to say it until the Lord comes to take me. The church, the body of Christ needs to repent of its division because we are blocking the light of Jesus Christ into this world instead of reflecting it in all of its glory. How many of you know what a laser is? I didn't get this in high school. I am way too old to have gotten this in high school. Laser? I mean, we were still working on candles. Well, that's maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> a laser takes light, it takes some energy into it, and it bounces it back and forth. And I want to read you. I looked this up. I don't lean on my own understanding. I went to How Things Work on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> and it says, in lasers, an electric current stimulates the emission of photons. That's light stuff. Lasers emit light only of one frequency. Light travels in the same direction and light waves are in phase. See, this light got to be stimulated. In order to have a laser work, you got to take light, but then it's got to be stimulated. That's called the Holy Ghost. It stimulates that light. And what it does is it puts it in phase. So there's only one frequency. It's all going in exactly the same direction. 
And now, because if you take a flashlight out and, and shine it on something, you know what it does? It bounces off. That's why you see it. It bounces off. Regular light. But you take a laser, and a laser that would bounce off a metal will now cut through that metal. Thy word. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. When was the last time you shared the word of God with somebody and you saw that word cut into them? Cut out the things that were bad. Cut out the things that caused them harm. Cut out the things that caused them hurt. Cut out the things that caused them pain. When was the last time you handled the word of God and saw that happen? Maybe we're not in sync with the Lord the way we think we are. We're not supposed to be a prison. We're supposed to be a laser. But that happens when the body of Christ works together. When we are in harmony, as Peter wrote. When we are in unity, as Paul wrote. When we allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives, as everybody wrote. Then all of a sudden, this light, this light of the world that's reflecting off us becomes not a prism, not sending out dim light all over, it becomes a laser, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through things. And if we're not seeing that, we need to get on our faces and consider the things of God. Meditate on the things of God. Find out why. These are the last days. We need to not be fooling around. It's not about our glory. It's not about us. It's not about our church. It's not about our pastor. It's not about our music. It's not about our anything. He says the glory of God has risen on you. It is about the glory of God. It is about the light of Jesus Christ. All we have to do is be a rock that doesn't let anything get in the way and just stand there and say, use me, Lord. Why don't they teach this in high school physics? Why don't they tell kids from the ground up that your life is about Jesus Christ? That your life is about the glory of God? That the things that are created are there to reveal the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Why don't they tell? Why do we tolerate not letting them do that? Take your kids out of those government schools that refuse to allow the name of Jesus Christ except as a curse. You, mother, father, train up your children in the ways they should go. Start teaching them the Word of God. Start telling them, don't just look at a moon, don't just look at... Consider the work of His hands. When you look into the sky, if you don't see that sermon being preached, that the heavens proclaim the glory of God, you don't know what's going on. You're not getting an education, you're getting propaganda. This is a serious message for serious times. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. High school science. Every bit of science is about Jesus Christ. Because nothing came into existence unless it came into existence through Him. He is the Word through which everything was made. Amen. We need to start lining our lives up so we become a laser instead of a prison. So that our lives, instead of being distracted, instead of letting the world get in the way and block that light, so people only see the slightest sliver of light, that they can see the fullness of God's glory that has risen on us, and we start bringing that light into this dark old world while there is yet time. I was tired of vainly looking I had nights, you know, they sure were dim And then the light shone through the darkness The moment that I had turned to Him He loves me yesterday, today 